All right, guys, welcome to another training here for Acquisition Air. We're going to get into some stuff uh, that we've been learning over the last few weeks since our last call. And that's the cool thing about this beta launch. You know, there, there's a lot of learning on all sides. And the whole idea is for us to keep coming together to share that information. And, you know, things that we think are one way in the beginning might not turn out to be that way as we dig into it. You know, a perfect example is in a lot of the campaigns, you know, I was pushing you guys very hard to use three keyword phrases. And what we found in reality in the secondary search world, that might not work. <laughs> it's worked in a few cases, but in, in probably more cases than not, it's worked detrimentally. So two keyword phrases, I'm still going to say one keyword phrases are going to be a mistake because they're just going to get you too much junk. But two keyword phrases, and that's where you're using two keywords or, or two words in a keyword phrase as a single keyword. So if you're running three word phrases as your keywords and you're not getting the results that you think you should be getting, try mixing that up. You know, and another thing too, this this should have been apparent to me right out of the gate because I know a lot about, you know, the pay-per-click world and the ad word world, the paid traffic world. And what what they do is they split up a lot of different campaigns. Like in pay-per-click, for instance, they will set up these, these campaign buckets with different keywords in them. And that goes back to what I teach in the ACT program is segmenting your market. You don't want to send the same emails just out to everyone. You want to send very specific communication based on what people are searching for. So you don't want to make like one project, one campaign, and just put every keyword under the sun in there because you're going to be responding to those people and you need to respond in the appropriate way if you want to convert them into a sale. So here, here is something that I've come up with over the last week and I've been sharing this with some people and it's been getting decent results. And when I say decent, I say that goes from, from bad to good. So <laughs> what you can do is you, you, absolutely want to segment your keywords into buckets so when you create a campaign all the keywords that you use should be very similar in nature to that exact thing that that person wants right and i used the example before of health don't put people with kidney issues in the same one with with gum disease right it's a completely different thing even though it's under the health category. So take all the gum disease keywords and put them into one campaign. Like every way that someone could possibly search about gum disease or anything that relates to that belongs in that campaign. Create another campaign for the other stuff. You know, so make your campaigns very specific. But as you start out, here's, a, here's this is pure strategy for you guys. When you start out, put all the keywords into a single campaign that are relevant. Like I just explained, relevance is the key here. When you run this campaign, let's say you're, you want 10, 10 leads per day. When you run this campaign and you look at your leads, they're all going to have the keyword that that lead came from. And what you're probably going to find is you're probably going to find a vast majority of the leads in your Google sheet are coming from the same keyword. What that means is that means that keyword has a lot of volume of traffic. This traffic volume is very different in secondary search than it is in SEO. So this is how you find out where your volumes of traffic are. When you look at your Google sheet, if you've got one single keyword that's bringing the vast majority of your leads, that right there tells you that's a high volume keyword. 
And in many cases, you'll notice you get your 10 leads within a half hour. That tells you there's a whole bunch more laid on the table that you're not getting for that particular keyword. But here's the worst part of that. You're not getting leads from any of the others, which might be your high converters. So you might be shooting yourself in the foot. So here's what you do. You run this campaign for a day or two. You look at the results. You take the one that's the high volume one and you take it out of that campaign. Split it onto its own separate campaign. Put that one keyword in that one campaign and then set that campaign for only one lead a day. So you're just, you're putting it in a box over on the side and you already know it's a winner as far as volume. Now you run your other campaign back at 10 leads a day. If you, if you really want to cap it at 10, then run it at nine. So you've got the one coming in over here for that one keyword. And now you've got the, the rest of the campaign running at nine. And then you're going to do it again. And eventually you'll get these things split out. And now as these leads are coming in, you will be able to see which one is converting. And naturally, when you find your converting keywords, that's when you scale up your campaigns. So that is a really good strategy. If you guys are just doing this for the first time or you're trying to figure out which keywords I should be focused on, which ones I want to buy, and by separating them into their own campaign, that will allow you ultimate control to scale your campaigns up and be very, very successful. If you do it any other way, it's going to take you a long time and you may never really figure out what's going on. So that is pure strategy. That is pure traffic strategy. And anybody that has run traffic campaigns and any other platform is going to know that. They're going to recognize that and see that. And that is the way you want to approach this. So there's a little, there's a little bit of work you know, to figure out how this thing is going to work for any given client, any given keyword niche. Uh, you know, it's it's not a push button strategy. You know, it's like anything else. Good things are worth fighting for. And this is a very, very good thing. So I wanted to get that out. Another thing that keeps coming up, this thing keeps rearing its ugly head every time I turn around. And it's not what I call a ghost. You know, a lot of times people just throw all these potential problems at me. And I'm like, are these real problems? Are you actually hearing this? Or are you just are you chasing ghosts? You know, let's stop chasing ghosts. When you guys hear something that's a real objection, bring that forward. We want to deal with it. And the one that keeps coming up rearing its ugly head is compliance. Right? This keeps coming up over and over and over. If you use the system as prescribed, it is 100% compliant. If you look at the CAN Spam Act, it says very clearly that you can email anyone for anything at any time as long as you give them a way to opt out. That's it. Cut and dry, plain and simple. If they say no and they opt out, do not continue to email them or you will not be in compliance. That's it. That's all there is to it. They do not have to have opted in for you to email them. Now, that said, the majority of ours have opted in because we're buying them through a big data source. So we're we're one step even beyond ahead of being compliant. So whether that matters or not to your prospective clients or to you is irrelevant. But we are compliant 100%. Here's where we may not be compliant. And if you're, if you're using the system outside of our guidelines, you might not be compliant. If you're sending emails out and you're not putting a way to unsubscribe, you are uncompliant. You're going against the CAN Spam Act. The other thing, and we've said this right from the beginning, we, we have the ability to collect phone numbers at this point. 
And up till very recently, that has been compliant also. But there are some new laws, some new policies going in about people opting in directly to you to be able to text them, right? So I don't know where they're, where we are in that regulation yet, but if it's not in place yet, it's going to be soon. So we've always said, do not text people, even though you're getting their phone number, you don't know that that's a text number to begin with. That might be a landline, you know, and it may not be to who you think it is. Because when these, the way that we get our information, our client data, you know, your lead is they have put that information in online voluntarily to receive materials. Now, as you all know, you've all done this. You've all put your information in a form somewhere online to receive information at some point in time. I don't think there's anybody here that hasn't done that. Based on your experience, you probably also know that in many cases, if it required a phone number, you didn't put the right phone number in. You put some bogus phone number because you don't want calls, right? That's why on, our emails are right on the money. Our emails are all scrubbed and they're 100% they're absolutely clean, clear emails. That's why we can get a 99% delivery rate because of that. The phone numbers we've said right from day one are not that way. The phone numbers are voluntary. A lot of them are bogus. A lot of them are, are not good. So they're there. It's just a perk that we can get them. But do not start banging those phone numbers and sending them with text because you do not have permission for that. Right? So here's how you get permission. If you want to do text campaigns, which are really, really successful, they're really powerful, all you have to do is start out as we prescribe with an, an email and ask for permission. These people are in market. Every one of these leads has expressed an interest in what you're sending. That's guaranteed. We do not scrape leads. We do not get garbage leads. Every lead we deliver, we deliver it because that person put their hand up by looking for something. So they are interested. I don't know what level they're interested. I don't know what point they are in their sales process, but they are interested. So if you are a good marketer and you've done the work and you've figured out exactly what they want, why they want it, and you craft a compelling email you will get a high conversion ratio of getting that person to interact with you. If you can offer them something in that email and get them to respond and say, yes, please send that to me. Then you respond back with sending them what they ask for. Now you take it to another level. You offer them even more. Like in the first case, you might send them a PDF that says, hey, you know, I've got I did some research and there's three things that you know before you buy yada, 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 whatever it is they're looking for. Now, somebody that sees that and they're really in the market to buy that thing, they're probably going to get your free thing to see what they need to know before they make that purchase. Now you've got them hooked. You give them the thing. You're being very helpful. You're helping them get what they want. And now you offer them more. And Frank Kern, a very, very famous marketer in the internet marketing space, he does next what is called stacking the cool. You're already a cool person because you're trying to help with no strings attached. But now you're going to stack the cool. And you're going to give them more than you promised them. You're going to say, by the way, you know, I did a quick little video on this that explains why these three things are important. And you just flat give that to them. But here's the thing. This is a good point to ask them, can I text this to you? I've got it on my phone. You're creating a real human conversation here with a person that's meaningful. So they've already asked for the email. You sent them the email. Now you're saying, hey, I got this cool thing on my phone. I'd love to share it with you. What's the best number for me to text this to you? Now they're going to give you the right text number and they're giving you permission 
to text them. You are 100% compliant. You've done it in the right way. And I guarantee you, you're going to get results if you do that. So that's how I would recommend using our system. If you use it that way, I can almost assure you, you're going to get good results, but you've got to do the work. You've got to do the marketing work ahead of this. Our system is a traffic generating machine. It is made to deliver you leads of people that want something. It's your job to figure out what that is, what they want, and why they want it, and how you're going to make that emotional connection to them to help them get what they want. If you do that, you're going to sell some shit. It's just that simple. And as, as, as simple as it is, I'm going to tell you, it's easier said than done. That work is where most people fail. Most people will not do what I just told you. Most likely because they just don't know. You guys are 10 steps ahead because you know. You know what you need to do. It's just up to you to decide if you're going to do it or not. And if you don't do it, you're probably going to be in our support forum complaining. You're probably going to be saying, your system doesn't work. Well, bullshit. The system does work. It's... You failed at your job as a marketer. That's what wasn't working. So I can't be any clearer on that. The system works. We've got people that it's working for. And I can tell you by looking at what they're doing, they're doing exactly what I just told you how to do. Exactly. And everyone that is telling me the system doesn't work, they're doing anything but what I just said. So you've got a recipe for success. You've got a system that works. You put those two together and you're going to make some sales. Whether these are for yourself or for your customers, it doesn't matter. If you're doing this for yourself, great. If you're doing it for customers, you have the ability right now to have something no one else has. And you can make a lot of money with the system by having something no one else has. Guaranteed you in business, this is the most vital key element there is for the success of any business is leads and sales. The leads without sales is worthless. We have the machine to give you all the leads you could ever want. What you have to do is turn them into sales for your customer. Do not expect your customer to know how to do this. You can't just throw leads at a customer that doesn't know how to convert them and have that customer come out happy. They will not. That'll come back on you and you're going to bring it back to me and I'm going to put this video here right back in your face. So, and, and I can guarantee you, you're going to have that negative experience if you, if you do this. If you throw leads at somebody that doesn't know how to convert them, they're not going to make any sales. They're spending money and they're not going to be happy. And this is no different for you if you're doing this for yourself. If you're spending money and you're not making sales, you're not going to be happy either. So it's, you know, it's very simple. If you guys are not in the ACT marketing protocol, that is, we've dedicated that entire system to training and teaching people the marketing part of this. I've been doing that for years in, in all these years, you know, it's always been you build the system and then the problem is always traffic. Well, now we've solved the traffic problem. So if you're having a problem now, it's probably on the marketing side. So you want to follow that protocol, that ACT marketing protocol. It's the way ad agencies have been doing it for over 100 years and it just flat out works. So the other thing I wanted to talk about is our advancements. Since we've opened this up, since we went through our beta process and our, our official initial launch with beta, we've increased the power of the system exponentially behind the scenes. Some of you might have seen that. Some of you might not. Like right now, we've got the Go High Level integration. Uh, we have one team that's using Go High Level at a very high level. <laughs> They're going high level with this thing. 
and they're getting phenomenal results. And I just got a couple emails, you know, last night about the the results out of the system with Go High Level. So the next release that we're going to do is the Kartra release. I'm particularly excited about that because I know Kartra like the back of my hand. I do not know the Go High Level system. I'm not an expert in that system. But Kartra, I am. And I will be able to create campaigns for you guys, like shell campaigns that you can plug your information into and away you go. It will completely automate the process of the marketing for this. So when you connect the automation of the lead generation with the automation of delivering your messages, this is going to be game over, guys. You can have both the systems high power on each end and what you do with it at that point is completely up to you. If you're working or your clients are working with different CRMs, you can use Zapier to connect them. We've had several people that have done that successfully. This system will pipe these leads into any CRM with a little bit of effort on your part. That's not something we're going to do for you. That's something that you're going to have to do yourself using Zapier to connect the dots. But if you're, you know, if you're, if you're tech savvy at all, the people that are tech savvy that have done this have not had any issues with it at all. So it's uh, and yes, and it does work with the sub accounts and go high level. Absolutely. So the guys that are doing that, they're, you know, they're having a ball with this at this point because now it's a no brainer. They're using the integration to connect the go high level account and off they go. So when the leads come in and Again, I'm not a specialist in go high level, so I don't know exactly, you know, what's going on under the hood there. But with Kartra, I've designed the system of the way it's going to go. When a lead comes in and you're integrated in your Kartra account, that lead is going to get pushed into your Kartra account and it's going to come in with the tag of the campaign name that it came from. That tag can now trigger an automated sequence to go out through the Kartra mail system. So the lead hits your system, boom, it gets an automated email right now. Right while this person is still looking for the stuff, they're going to receive an email from you. And then the Kartra system can now do a, a sequence of follow-up emails based on whatever you lay out for them. My recommendation is to touch them every day for a week and then slow your roll. Go back to like maybe once a week. Every email that you send out, at the end of the email, these emails should be short too. These emails should be very, very short and to the point. Don't get into book writing here. Just tell them what you've got. Tell them how to get it. That's it. And then work them into a longer conversation as you go. But here's the thing. On the end of each email tell them what to expect next. Like say, you know, if you want this, just go ahead and reach back out to me and I'll send it to you. So you're telling them what to expect next. When they reach out and you send it to them, tell them what they're going to expect next. Say, hey, here's the thing you asked for. It's going to help you, guide you into the right purchase. I don't, I just, I just want to help you get what you want, right? That's all you're here to do. You're just here to help them make a buying decision. And then at the end of that email, you say, by the way, I've done a short video. If you're interested, you know, let me text it to you. It's on my phone. Once they do that, you sell them, hey, you know, I'm going to send you an email invite tomorrow. Look for it. Now they're looking for your emails. You know, and then when you get to the end, say, you know, I got some stuff to do. I'm working this week to, to create something and I'll let you know next week when it's done, I'll send it to you. Now they're expecting your email next week. When it comes into their box, they're going to celebrate it instead of throw it in the trash. It's communication is really, really key in marketing. You're creating a relationship. You're not just one off firing shit out at people, like throwing shit on the wall to see what's going to stick right? That doesn't work. 
you're trying to communicate and create a relationship with this person. And when I do this, I've been doing this for a very long time. And when I do it right, it creates lifetime relationships that bring me a lot of money over time, whether it's from that person or referrals or whatever. I'm creating a lifetime relationship with every person that I touch in the marketing, everyone. And some don't stick. Some will go and find somebody that, that resonates with them. I'm not a fast talker. Some people resonate with fast talkers. I'm not going to be their cup of tea. But there's a lot of people that don't like fast talkers. So when they meet me, they're like, wow, this guy is cool. This is the guy for me. So you will draw the people that you want by being who you are and communicating clearly. So anyway, I know Brady's got some stuff here that he's, you know, he's really under the hood with you guys. He's, he is way more in tune with what's going on for the campaigns and all that stuff. And I mean, he is on it. So <laughs> I wanted to get that out and, and just, you know, get that stuff out and make it clear for you. That, you know, if I, if I make a mistake, I'm not opposed to admitting it. You know, I've always been that way. And, you know, for me to say three keyword phrases was the right thing to do. I'm telling you now, we found that not to be true. That was a mistake on my part. I have no problem with that. I am here to help you guys get results. And I'm not going to stick to anything that I know not to be true. So when I find something not to be true, I'm going to tell you what I found. And that's that's it for today so <laughs> brady you want you got some stuff you want to share yeah give me one second <clears throat> okay i am i am taking a screenshot of troy's comment because it's amazing we offer monthly memberships of free for a month or two and i don't get case studies or um these types of messages so troy i hope you got that message you just give me a thumbs up uh, i'd love to interview you um doesn't even have to be a video it could literally just be you know hard data like this um that's what we're looking for like it only helps you <clears throat> you guys can rebrand it but if you guys sit on it it doesn't help anybody other than just yourself so we're trying to help you guys as much as possible so um let me get this screenshot real quick john and then i just have a few um <clears throat> i'll say maybe announcements of just some things that i've talked about with the tech team that is kind of down the pipeline, some stuff you guys have might have already heard, but also um, some mindset when we're sitting in front of the customer. I'm actually going to load, if John okays it, um, a sales call that uh, myself and Connie did with somebody that we met at the TNC promo. And um, I did the best I could to set it up on the, the beginning as to how I would set it up based on what I know about our system and how it operates um, and, and really positioning yourself to not just go out and sell this thing. It will sell itself. Like John said, it's too sexy. Well, I want to talk about that real quick. I'm going to come back to this. Troy, if we could just get together. I don't worry about taking a screenshot and waste everybody's time with me doing this. So I'd love to uh, you know, get on a call. So give me two seconds. I'll close out of this. There we go. Uh, a few announcements. So um, we... We had a an update to, I'll call it the pixel code, you know, the embed code, whatever you want to call it for site campaigns, for those of you that are using that. Uh, John, you might hit on this after I'm done as well, because I know that we've seen a, a few people that early on, you weren't exactly impressed with it, just because you've seen maybe some other companies out there that have maybe a retargeting feature. But some of the things that we've seen a few folks that are internet marketers do with it would absolutely just blow your mind like they're they're blown away with the de deliverability rate they're used to people saying yeah 100 percent we'll give you every visitor that comes to their website when they're giving you they're giving you common complainers they're giving you people that haven't opted in they're giving you bot traffic all of that stuff gets sorted out before it hits your google sheets or wherever you're sending it to so the deliverability rate yeah you may only get 20 but 20% of good data is better than us sending you 80, 90, 100% crap, right? So the site leads, I think, is something that, John, we've talked to that you've thought a little bit differently about now hearing from other folks that we actually have a really good product. And it's very inexpensive at 25 cents a lead. 
to have good deliverable rates. Troy's shaking his head, and I'm like, I'm going to jump off a call now and just get with Troy and do this. But um, another thing, uh, me and Becky, if you don't know who Becky is, she is not working for us physically as a human. Um, we're going to let Becky and unleash Becky here soon. Me and Becky have been around and around this week. And uh, I'm telling you what, I've never programmed a bot, but it's fun, but it's also challenging. So I'm trying to get Becky to a position where it takes some load off of Connie and I, and we can help you guys kind of that customer success uh, perspective versus just sitting and answering tickets. Um, I have another idea that I'm going to run by you, John, also this afternoon um, that I think could help out with that. Uh, you went through the DNC policy. Um, I'm going to get the, so the DNC policy is on the support site. Uh, so for your customers, you guys can just either copy. I can actually put a PDF underneath the actual um, policy as well. I just copied and pasted the text and put it on the support site, but I can also put a PDF where you can download it like a drive or whatever. So you can actually give that to your customers because again, we've talked about this in previous calls. We can only do so much. Your customers are your customers. They're not ours. And in a lot of cases, they don't have access to our support site. So if that information does not trickle downhill and now your customers are illegally sending texts and this sort of thing because you missed it, that's not our fault. So you can take that off of our site. I'm also going to put the, uh, I think, Richard, you had said this maybe two or three months ago, maybe regarding the agreement terms. Sorry, for totally forgot about it till I think last week or two weeks ago, John said, hey, we need to get that on there. So I'm working on taking that and making it a blank, anonymous, you know, lead generation software type agreement to put that on there so you guys can send that to your customers. Because let's just be real, there might be one weirdo out there that really wants to read down through it, but legally they need to be able to. So a lot of them just click through. Yeah, let's get to the point here. Let's, let's set up a campaign. Um, and we've all experienced that where they go and, you know, don't do the right things anyway. So um, you guys know we've said this before, but it's new. It's another month. I'm going to put this on the support side also. Um, eventually can't give you a time frame. I want to say next week, but I just can't, <laughs> uh, verified cell phone numbers will most likely be an increase in price. Um, for those of you that want to just pick up the phone and call, I still don't recommend it. Uh, I always just think of it like, like this. If somebody calls you out of the blue and you're busy day, even if it's something you might be related to, you better be hot to trot, ready to pull your credit card out. Like right then when they call you and to time that out, is just weird. Why not send them an email, know who you are, you know, let them do some research and then have a relationship with them through text or, you know, whatever it is now that you've scrubbed them, all that kind of stuff. So do what you want, but cold email is how this system was designed. It's probably a good thing to do that. Like John said, um, LinkedIn integration, again, I don't know time frame. that's going to increase our B2B leads. So being able to maybe see where somebody is in a company, the position, whatever it is, you know, a lot of people will say, well, this is amazing because it's not just scraping a list of a zip code area or a list of people that sit at a CEO position that are whatever the terms you're looking for. Well, it's actually going to be able to give you possibly that, but they're actually raising their hand, kind of the raise your hand marketing. If anybody follows Brad Sugars, that's like his big thing is raise your hand marketing. Like you're actually finding people that are right now searching for what you'd hope to be searching for. Um, this is just a, a maintenance thing. Again, guys, we're, we're in beta launch. Like we're not mainstream. We're not a multi-billion dollar company. We haven't been in business for 10 years. You guys are still helping us kind of prime the pump here and learn stuff. And what I love about John is as a leader, I think the most humble thing or the thing that I respect him the most is his willingness to say, hey, I, I kind of screwed up. I might have told you the wrong thing, but we're all still learning and I hope you can respect that. There's probably going to be some people that are saying, oh, my gosh, these people know what they're doing. We don't need those folks anyways. You know, we're looking for people that keep a good attitude like Roy. Roy's been through the mix, but he's been able to kind of stay positive and he's getting some stuff happening. But if you run into problems or a client of yours runs into problems, it's kind of like I think of this like parenting. I'm not trying to go too much mindset here. I'm not your guys' coach or, or dad. But when your kids have a horrible attitude. A lot of times it's because they see you as an example, have a horrible, horrible attitude in, in situations. So think of your client as if you get frazzled and you go, oh my gosh, I can't believe that freaking server busy later thing coming up, that red button. Relax. If you guys have ever seen John on calls, whether it's a Thursday or on one of these, and he's doing a demo and it just doesn't go the way that it's supposed to, it's all good. Connie and I joke all the time, like we're not all going to die. 
it's all good. We'll help you. When is a support ticket came in that we haven't been able to help you pretty quickly? So it's all good. We'll get to the bottom of it. We're not we're not perfect. But kind of a, pre, a maintenance thing is if your customer says, hey, I went in and this button, red button kept coming up or it says server busy, try later. Probably because there's a lot of freaking people adding campaigns. So it's a good thing. It actually, this is something people want. But just hit the refresh button. Like tell them not to freak out because if they hit it so many times and hit save, 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 they've now created probably four or five campaigns and they're going to come to you like, hey, what the crap happened? Now you're going to come to us. So it's all good. I literally just had it happen today is why I say that. It could be a browser thing. It could be, you know, somebody didn't clear the cache. Like there's so many different multitudes of things. We're trying to get to the bottom of it as to why it ever happens, but it happens. So it is what it is. It's not a big deal. Just hit refresh. If something isn't moving right, we'll get it fixed. There it is. Uh, hi, Anna. There you go. It was Anna. There you go, Anna. Thanks for thanks for saying that. It was not you. It was not. Um, we got to get to the bottom of it. So you hit refresh. And I did this morning too, Anna. So again, I'm not perfect. I don't know the tech side as well as some of those guys that I'm just kind of the mediator here. Um, all right, let's let's do this real quick, John, if you don't mind. I want to I want to dive in with what I've seen, because like John said, I am privileged to more conversations probably than John with people that are out there in the trenches with us. When I say with us, with me and Connie and John, but more me and Connie and the fact that we're kind of on the front lines. John's just bringing the people in and saying, hey, here's what you need. Um, I think I don't want to go down a sales route of like teaching you how to create sales. Richard, like you said, you've got 50 plus years in sales. That's longer than I've been alive. I'm not trying to coach you guys, but what I've seen is because this is an amazing pioneered technology. Nobody's ever heard the word pre-targeting. We heard at TNC, people walk from the table like, there is no way. This has got to be too good to be true. Like, you've got to be kidding me. I've been thinking about something like this for 10 years. So emotionally, it's very easy in a sales realm to pull them in to, to seal the deal, right? Unless you just mess something up or you say something stupid or like John says, you go down the weeds. This is an easy sale. But part of me, thanks, Troy, part of me um, wants to like give you a different mindset now knowing a little bit more of what we know. And I don't honestly think this might come out wrong or unconfident in the product. I'm extremely confident in the product. I've seen way too much already, but I don't even think we've touched the tip of the iceberg as to what this is going to be in the next six to 12 months from what we have our hands on. So how do you tell the customer that? without getting the customer so jacked that now 30 days later, they're coming back to you saying, why isn't this working? Well, for one, a lot of folks think of SEO, Google, 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 Google search, Google AdWords, Google Analytics. Oh, well, this keyword, man, this three word, man, oh my goodness, 36,000 searches a day in this zip code. Doesn't mean anything to our system. When you look at, like John said, Google will tell you they're 80% of search, and that's false. They're a pinprick when it comes to search. So when I'm sitting down in front of a customer, I'm pretty real and pretty transparent of letting them know that we do use secondary search to identify traffic. It's a very pioneer technology. It's very, very first to the chase. No one's ever tapped into this market. It's unlimited in what's what's out there. And then when I talk about the secondary search, I give them an example. I just say, let me give you an example, because a lot of people don't know how to probably put that into, well, how does that work? I just think they always go to Google. Well, just two, three days ago, I'm sorry if you don't like guns, but I do. I was on DuckDuckGo, because I prefer DuckDuckGo versus Google, secondary search engine. From DuckDuckGo, I went to the list of companies, I clicked on guns.com. And when I got to guns.com, I went in, and I put Glock 19 with red dot site. That right there is a website that we don't own. Acquisition Air doesn't own it. Big data providers don't own it, but it's probably monitored. Legally, I can't say if it is. That is secondary search like John talks about. That is much better and much later in the process of the search versus the beginning, which is Google, which some of those analytics like John talked about aren't even really true. <laughs> so 
taking what you have and presenting it to the customer on the front end and letting them know that yes, it is a newer technology. Yes, this is literally dipping into millions of websites, millions and millions of, of, of visitors because big data knows everywhere you go, every single second of the day. Would you like to know, Mr. and Mr. Customer, who's actually right now, as we sit here, looking for the keywords that you would hope they would be searching for in those secondary search networks? Yes, I would. All right, well, let me ask you a question. What's your ideal customer? Like when you look at your customers today, if you're going to use a software like this to generate leads for your customers, what's your customer base look like? And ask them, what is their ideal customer? Because if they tell you, well, we do uh, we do kind of small mom, mom pa, you know, shops, we do flower shops, we do... I'm not putting that down. Maybe you do some marketing for those small local searches. I can show you case studies. I can show you testimonies. I can show you Google Sheets of folks that are generating leads in certain zip codes. So it's not to say that it doesn't generate leads, but don't set your customer up for failure that at the bottom tier of our system and how it operates would be on a local level, most likely. It may not generate 100 leads a day. So sitting in front of your customer and not mentioning anything about a consultative approach of what is their ideal customer, you know, are they looking to go outside of that and find some national, like what is their 10 next 10 years, right? Take an interest in them because whenever they tell me what their ideal customer is, I want to turn around and I want to say, okay, well, let me tell you about what our optimal ideal customer is, what our system performs best with, national search, large niche auto insurance, real estate, and give them an explanation of why. That way, when you talk to them and they're like, man, this sounds amazing. So how many leads do you think I could generate in even a local search? You know, that's a really good question. We don't own every website that we have access to regarding search. Google might be able to tell you that because they own that one.com. They've been in business for 10, 15, 20 plus years. Let's just see what happens if you feel like this could be a good fit for you. It might generate one Mr. Customer. It might generate 10. It might generate 100, even if it's a local search. But let's give it a try. If it doesn't work for you, maybe that customer won't be a good fit for this. That's okay. And now you're sitting down with them and you have posture of you're giving them transparency. You're showing them how the system works. And you're not overselling this because I'd be the first to say, I'd love to have every customer on board that you have, but it just may not be a fit for every single one. And it may not be a fit for every single customer to have access to the platform as well. And I'd be the first to tell you that I've adopted the Limbacher mentality of the old bull mentality of lifestyle, work smarter, not harder. If somebody can do it, let them do it. But if they can't do it, man, it's going to be a headache for you. And I've seen it in the support tickets. That's all I would say is I've seen it to where people want this, just walk away from it. Guys, there might be a little bit of a grind your first 60, 90, 120 days, maybe 180 to get some good clients off the ground, train them, all that kind of stuff. That's what I'm trying to do from a back end standpoint is empower you guys with whatever you need to be successful at this. But we just can't do it all for you. So I haven't, sat down in front of 100 customers. That's my disclaimer. I have sold things for the last 20 years of my life. But at the same time, this is very easy to sell to the right person. But you've got to be willing to have those conversations with them because if not, I promise you, you're going to have somebody come back to you 30 days later and tell you that the system doesn't work. And I could literally show them multiple things, which you should have showed them that it does. It just may not work for that specific customer, but why not give it a try? Hopefully the guy doesn't have just one customer. So that's my mindset. Hopefully I didn't totally unravel anything, John, that you've ever said or did, but that's just, I guess, I'll say it like this, it's from my heart to yours because we're not successful guys if you guys aren't successful. And I don't like to get tickets or anything, emails of, hey, I had a customer and we don't have a lot of these. I'm not, I'm not Debbie Downer here. I just know we have had them. And we don't like them as much as you, but there has been a few that I'm like, oh, man, I wish he would have did this, or I wish she would have did this, or let me ask you a question about your process. And they're like, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, sign here, man, best thing since sliced bread, free targeting, it's going to change your life. And they're like, sweet, this is awesome. 
And John is very good at sales. He's very good with his words. He's not, he's not dishonest with that as well. But if you go out and you just totally sell this like hotcakes without being a little bit transparent, you're going to have a little people that might be upset with you. So I'm just asking you to tread lightly. Doesn't mean you can't scale quickly with that mindset. So have a process in place because we want you guys to be successful too. But I think sometimes we're setting it up in a, just a different mindset than I would had I would be selling it for you. So that makes sense, John. Hopefully I'll, I'll yeah. ask you first asking everybody. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're, you're right on the money. Everything you said was, was right on core with everything that I've been saying. And, you know, like since the beginning, I'm always the easy path. You know, I'm like lightning. I will take the path of least resistance every time. And the path of least resistance here is finding customers that actually know how to do marketing and convert. Your best customer is going to be the customer that is already buying leads. They're already buying traffic. If you go into the local mom and pop shop and they've just got, you know, a crappy website that has no calls to action. They don't know how to sell stuff online. They don't have a CRM. They don't have any marketing in place to convert customers. That is not a good customer for you. That's not somebody that you want to sell leads to. Unless you are willing to do all that work for them. And you know, I don't know, none of you, I'm looking at faces here. None of you guys look like you're into pain. And that's exactly what that would be. Take the path of least resistance. It's a little bit harder to prospect and find the right customer. But I guarantee if you find them, they're going to make your life a dream versus a living hell. You know, and I, I think it was Churchill said, if you're going through hell, keep going. Don't stop there. <laughs> I'm telling you, in most cases, those little local markets are hell. Keep going. Keep looking for your ideal customer. They're out there and there's a lot of them. You know, so think about this. If you found a customer that was already purchasing leads and these, these customers, I'm going to describe a customer here that absolutely exists. I know some of them. They're buying leads on Facebook and they're buying $30,000 worth a month. And here's the thing. You ask, well, if they're buying 30 grand a month, it must be working, right? The answer is yes. That's why they're buying 30 grand a month. Here's the next question. Why aren't they buying 40 if it's working? Why don't they scale if it's working? Here's the simple answer. They're buying 100% of what's available. There isn't 40 to buy. They're buying everything available to them. And then you show up with a new traffic source. And how much do you think they're going to want to buy from you? Everything you can give them. That's your ideal customer. Not the florist that doesn't know how to market and doesn't know how to do anything and is going to be a pain in your ass. You know, you get to decide. Brady has got a classic, classic phrase about what is it? God doesn't create mediocre. You choose it. <laughs> God doesn't create average. You choose it. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want an average life, God didn't want you to have an average life but you do get to choose it. You get a chance here to decide what your life is going to look like and who you're going to work with. You are not bound and committed to work with anyone. You get to choose who your customer base is. And, you know, I've looked at that my entire life. I'm very picky about who I'll take on as a customer. If they're going to be a lot of work and a lot of problems, I pass. I gracefully buy out, bow out. So, you know, you, you get to choose that. So what everything, everything Brady's talking about is right on the money. You know, this is, this is business is a, a working man or a working woman's game, a thinking man, thinking woman's game. You just have to think about it. So Richard, you had the question. Yep. Turn the mic on. Can you hear me? Okay. Yep. 
Okay. Uh, Brady, just on, on the contract thing, uh, I was curious about that. So I did copy and paste. Do you know that thing runs on 14 pages, single spaced in a Word doc at 12 point type? I mean, that puppy is long. I would never, I would, you'd have better luck stuffing a cat into a shoebox than getting me <laughs> to try and prevent, present a 14 page agreement to somebody in hard copy which is exactly why I said I want, you know, I only want to use your, I want to use the platform where they're just checking a box and we, and we move on down the road. The only yeah. thing, the only thing in that contract is there's one point where it says the, the it's supposed to be uh, litigated in the state and city of, you just need to change, have the ability to change that. And there's only, one place, I believe, maybe two in the whole contract where they even talk about that. That's the only thing that needed to be changed. And you can grab that when we set up our account. We're going to, we part of setting up the account is our address. So you know what city and state we're in. So you could grab it from the platform from there and autofill it there. If you're a tech guy, you know how to do it. I don't have a clue as to how you. That ain't me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think John wants to do that either, but I will, I will do my best. That's why I want to get it just on the support site. So at least you can have it and you can send it via like, uh, whatchamacallit to your customer. You don't have to send it to them in the yeah. mail. You can send it to yeah. them or uh, direct. Yeah. Digital. yeah For if, sure. you're gonna, if you're going to yeah. give that contract out manually or off your site, Richard, you can take the PDF that we've got up there. You uh -huh. can give a, a, a control A on that document it will select all the text then you can paste it into a word document and you can make that change yourself pretty easily but then how do i put it back into the system you just you just uh, well it wouldn't be in the system it's if that's you're the point, give that's, the, that's the point is that the whole thing about sales in my mind is is you gotta re, you gotta get, get rid of the snags if yeah, at well, any point it, it doesn't flow I don't know that we're going to be able to change that because I don't that, either. That's where that's where our legal counsel exists. Yeah. So if they're back in the system with, they're not going to go out to other states. That's where. Well, then can we can we then use them if we have a problem? That yes, yeah, absolutely. Okay. So well, then that that handles it. I don't know. I don't know if there's an indemnification clause in there. Um. I think there is, if I, I would assume, I, if I would, but that would probably cover you, but I, I'm not a legal guy either. So <laughs> I can tell you what, do, uh, send me an email, Richard. You have not because you asked not. It's the old wise saying, right? All I can do is send it up the chain and see if that's something they could possibly develop or they could, you know, say no. Yeah. So we're see, back if, when it comes down to legal is like a, there's a charging order in legal stuff. And, and basically if it's your customer, you're going to be in the first line of charge. If it's a platform yeah. issue and it actually is something that they have a beef with us on the back end, that's where our legal counsel lives and that's where they exist. And there, that's what that is there for. But you should, you know, you, you if you want to cover yourself on the front end, you can have your own contract with your own customers. That's where you would put your city and state in, not in ours. So... Yeah, well, that's, that's kind of what that's kind of what I figure. But I mean, yeah, like you said, it, this is all in beta. I yeah, I can ask for a pony for Christmas. Oh, I mean, yeah. I get one, yeah, but no, I have no. to ask for one. You know, absolutely. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just telling you why you're probably not going to get that pony. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. The other thing is, I'm still what one of the things that's really going to be critical on this, as you have just started spending the as you spent the first five minutes of this presentation talking about is you got to do the email stuff and i went through i've gone through the better part of a year actually learning how to do the small batch email stuff that is what's required into the new stuff and i now know how to do it so i know now know absolutely 100 that's not something that i want to do is you is that email guy anywhere near uh, right. arriving yet because that's a whole thing that needs to be moved off because that is a giant you yeah. gotta you gotta have your your five dollar an hour you know vas putting that stuff together because that is nothing but labor intensive yeah and if you remember back in the very first five minutes of this game i told you that 
<laughs> so you didn't need to spend a year learning that. <laughs> what well, well no, the, what it takes to actually set up all those records and set up the campaigns and set up the warm up and keep the warm up going and then balance your warm up against the emails you're sending out so that you don't send more than 50 emails a day from any one email account and you shouldn't have more than four to six emails in one particular i mean all that stuff yeah God, is that exhausting and that's, if i can hand that off to somebody weeds. that you, that's huh? the weeds i told you to stay out of and <laughs> and you really honestly guys you don't need to go and learn all that shit to do this you need to either find somebody that's already got the system in place they're ready to buy leads or you need to find a partner that wants to supply that. If you want to supply that as a service, you guys here are all business owners. This is not the stuff you want to be doing. This would be equivalent to me learning how to code this system. And I'd spend the next 10 years of my life trying to figure out how to code this system. You guys would never hear from me. It's not the best use of my time. As a business owner, for me to be flipping burgers is insanity. And for you to be figuring out and even considering digging into all that crap is insanity for you to, as a business owner. So at the time I did not know what the, I did not know that there was an alternative. And so I was just, I went down the road to learn. How, so I know how to do it and I don't want to do it. I was, why I was asking if you have a good email guy that should you, we need it. The, the, the bigger issue though, is really the one that Brady and you guys touched on early is that, even if you've got some big business that is doing email marketing and all that sort of stuff, they might be complaining about their leads because they have no way to track it. You, you know, one of the things that I've, it's really looked like to me, and here again, like I said, John, I'm willing to have you dissuade me of any of these <laughs> crazy ideas I have. But I think that I, if you're going to be doing this right, you're going to be selling leads, but you better go in there as a marketing strategist, because the first thing you're likely to have to do is make some improvements to their lead tracking system so that they actually can track the leads to know what the hell's going on. Because most companies, I mean, you can go to big companies, they aren't re they aren't re-emailing an existing list they have. There's a whole lot of stuff. Yeah, let me there. just let me just stop you there because you're yeah. putting us all into the weeds. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you the tracking you're talking about is part of any CRM system. That's not our deal. We are a lead generation software. We're not following them through and delivering all that other crap because that is all in a CRM. We're we're making connections to certain CRMs or you can take Zapier and zap this thing into any CRM you want. That's where you're going to get all that stuff that you need. And and honestly, if you guys want to know what I've I've figured out in the first five minutes of this game, who the ideal customer is. The ideal customer is a lead gen company that's been in years in business for 10 years. And they already have a bunch of people that want to buy leads and they've probably tapped out all of their sources. Those people already have the systems in place. They just need leads. That's your ideal customer. If you want to make an absolute killing in this, spend the next few days trying to find one of those guys and talk to them about what we have, how it's unique, how this is a new lead gen source that's virtually untapped. How would you like to test it out? They already have campaigns in place that convert. They could buy these leads and tell you in five minutes, these are awesome. How many do you got? Let's talk. That's your ideal customer. It's not going into somebody that has nothing and trying to figure it all out for them. It's not trying to, you know, reinvent the wheel. That's that's not where it is. So anyway, I'm going to I'm going to just leave that as it is cuz that's really all there is that needs to be said about that. <laughs> Let's go to Anna. Anna, go ahead. Hey, can you hear me? Yep. Okay, unfortunately I missed the first few minutes, so I missed uh some good stuff and I can go listen to it later, but um, you know, I am the one that filed the campaign yesterday and it said server is busy and all kinds of other crazy errors. And I know Brady and them are working on it. And of course, it's always your first campaign, right? But, 
<laughs> the site one was fine. I added it to my little go high level landing page. It's I don't think I have any leads in it yet, but it's you know it it worked perfect. So yeah. um so what you're saying today is excellent, but I didn't know that when I bought this one week ago. Okay. Okay. So I wanted this for my law firm clients, criminal law. And then also I got a new client who does, you know, he's like a tree surgeon, but then he mulches it up and whatever. I think I mentioned him. Mm -hmm. Um, So for me, I have not found uh, humans that actually want to work their leads at all. And I figured out some years ago, especially with, COVID 2020 lockdowns that uh, the, these people are clueless. Yes. Like, like they used to have staff that they could blame and say, oh, Patricia's supposed to do that. Patricia quit. She's not coming to work. She, she's not willing to die for a virus for that stupid company. Right. <laughs> so I started, you know, developing you know, my own snapshots, my own everything in high level. And I've done it for multiple niches. But like, I thought this would work for that. Like the, the, the tree surgeon guy is like a 15 to 30 mile radius in Colorado, busy area. I'm here in Houston, Texas. I really only do big cities because I don't really care about other cities. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're not worth the mon- money or the time to even talk to. Sure. So does this not work for that? When I made my campaign, I did, you know, that five minute thing. And then it gave me 237 zip codes. Mm -hmm. Right. So that should be a good enough area. It's Houston (laughs) DMA, basically, but not the full DMA. And then I did the keywords like the person, Darren, that's in y'all's training. I went through all of your training last night. Okay. And I did it exactly. And he said to put in 50 keywords in both contextual and SEO, which I don't think is what you're saying now. I need to make my keywords be different somewhat. Okay. So as long as, as long as the keywords are online to like a particular product or service, you could have a ton of different keywords in a campaign. As long as they're related to what you're trying to convert this person on, that's no problem. And in the beginning, okay, so let me let me let me ask this before uh-huh. you go on. So say, should I have a separate campaign that's got all the keywords for like expungement lawyer and all the keywords for DWI, DUI, drug, blah 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 blah, blah, blah lawyer, and then you know criminal lawyer, murder, uh, sexual assault, blah 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 blah, all that in one campaign, like. You I just want to know the best thing for me to do. And I don't want to do anything that isn't the best thing to do. Well, the best thing to do is watch the beginning of this, what you missed, because that's exactly uh-huh. what I covered. Okay. I need to, I probably should just go delete the first webinar and the 15 or 18 minute video that Daniel, it's still relevant, but there is some things that um, may not be the best information because your leads are like this. If you put them all, like you said, DWI and, this mm-hmm. one and this one, you can have all three of those in one campaign. It's kind of like, I'll use a, a, a John Limbacher analogy. You're on a boat, you're fishing, and you got 10 different lines out that are 10 different clients that you want to do keywords for or different niches of their business. The leads come in with whoever bites. And if the five leads that come in are just the one you know, vertical you're we dealing with, you have no idea if those keywords are going to generate for other portions of different nerve verticals or whatever you're talking about. So you want to right. break them in separate campaigns. Ideally, you can put as many as you want. You can have 50, you can have 10. It really, I would probably do at least 10 per vertical, per section, whatever you want to call that. And then you can continue to add more if it's not generating. But like John said, you could do a couple. And if it doesn't generate, add a few more. Once you find one that generates, you know, go from there and add more um, to your campaigns. But yeah, what, watch the beginning because that's the first thing I covered was the keyword and the campaign strategy and how to figure out which keywords are going to convert, how to, you know, how to go start to finish on, on the sequence on doing that. Yeah. So that was- okay. 
that'll so, pick up the right track. Okay, so but then Connie and and Brady led me to this page on y'all's site, keyword selection best practices, and mm -hmm. then one of it was like roofing company, and then it was giving me telling me to enter all the derivations, different variations. So yes, so roofing company is a keyword phrase. Roofing companies plural is another keyword phrase. Roofing company single string is another one. So if there's three variations of that. I can't tell you, Anna, because we don't have legal rights to monitor every single one of the websites. We're monitoring it through the relationships that we have. And then when we identify those folks, we're going out and actually buying their information. So um, to know exactly which of those three variations might work for you, that's where we're saying test it out. Okay, but, but this was my actual question. What about misspellings? Same. There are many the common misspellings, mm -hmm. um, like for expungement, right? Like not DWI, but there's many common misspellings. It doesn't say anything about that in there. Should I include the misspellings? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. That's what I wanted to know. Thanks. Yeah. Basically, yeah. a lot of this comes down, it boils down to common sense. If someone would type it in as a misspelling, then yeah, absolutely. There's no reason not to add that. I can tell you categorically criminals misspell a lot. <laughs> yep. This is all comes down to knowing your ideal customer. That's right. Might have just, That's right. Might have just cracked the code right there of misspelling, right? <laughs> just do a misspelling campaign. Uh, to, to answer your question too, and I don't want to actually yeah. not answer and I don't want to like take sure. from earlier whenever I was talking, um, yeah. this, this can work for one zip code. We just, I don't want to over promise people that there's going to be an unlimited amount of leads. Like in earlier webinars, we'd say, turn it up, turn it on, turn it down, you know, whatever, as far as mm -hmm. the lead count, just don't over promote it. That if it's a very local and this guy's like, I only want these five campaigns, no big deal. We can still generate leads. It might take you a little bit to find out what's producing because it's such a small area. And based on how our system operates, we typically, if you can, if you look on that sheet, you just read it. 10 is good, 20, 30 is better. If you go down to a zip, load, zip code level, 50 would be ideal, just based on how our system works. And you might say, well, what about LA? Same thing if you can. I get it, it's people, but how our system works and it goes out and monitors, uh, just trust me. Um, but Well, I, I think it's that. really good. And I think your explanation is really, really good. You know, And the thing is that I'm so new to this, but I'm not new to this world. Because I've been doing SEO like as long as John has, you know, yeah. and which was like before SEO was really SEO, you know, it was just like <laughs> <laughs> poke and pray. But the bottom line is that I haven't been able to explain this to any client. So all I've said, and this is literally what I've said, I've got this new thing. It's amazing. Uh, you know, it's $1,500 to start. You know, you want to or you don't. That is my explanation. That is the beginning, the middle, and the end, because I don't even know what this is that I'm so, selling. So that so really it. isn't that. That's an explanation of nothing, really. Exactly, <laughs> so, and it works great. <clears throat> yeah. So a better explanation was we've got a new system, a new technology, which allows us to monitor secondary search across the internet, where instead of paying for SEO that takes a long time and can be taken away at any time. <clears throat> There's your negatives. Instead of that, now using this new system, I can just tell you who's looking for you in an instant. That is an explanation of what the system is. That's how you should be describing it. And when somebody hears that, they're gonna go, oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah, I want that. So if you, if you, explain it the way you put it out there that really does there's no meaning to that other than hype you're telling them yeah it's this really great cool system but that is not going to appeal to their senses it's when somebody makes a purchase you have to seduce their heart and convince their head those two things have to happen simultaneously the convincing of their heart is making the promise of what they want they want leads that's a piece of cake mm -hmm. But now you have to convince their head with a unique mechanism of you have an actual way to make this happen.
You have a way to deliver on that promise. And that's where you have to describe what the system actually is. Okay, that description, don't, where is that? You you don't have to go into the weeds on them. Okay. You know, we, have, we have, on the support, <clears throat> if you go to the resources, uh, as a matter of fact, well, I don't need to share screen. If you go to the resources, <clears throat> there is, um, I think it's marketing documents. Sorry, I'm drawing a blank. Um, There's promo video and documents. Uh, promo video and documents. Let's Probably see. the promo video is like a two minute description of what, how it works. Yeah. And then there on below the video, there's a marketing brochure and then a 30 second sales pitch. Cause everything that we do can be rebranded, whatever you want to do. I am also getting ready. We actually have some live sales calls that John actually did with a customer, no video, just an audio. I just put kind of how he described it, the pitch, if you will. And then I actually put the whole video from start to finish without buying, you know, um, prices and things like that. But I'm also going to put one that myself and Connie did. Um, I think after I just explained myself, it's pretty much the exact same. John probably will approve of that. I'll put mine on there as well and at least hear it live. Like it was a live Zoom call as to how I explained it, knowing what I know in my position, working with the tech team. So um, you can kind of adopt it. But I would also say like, Make it yours, make it so that you're comfortable with what you're saying versus sounding obviously like a typewriter. Um, but I can put that on there as well from a live Zoom call that we did just a few days ago also. That would be great. I appreciate it. Thank you all. Yeah, yeah. It It's really short. And I got to tell you, of everything, I've, I've sold a lot of stuff over my lifetime. And of everything I've ever sold, this is probably, well, not probably, this is without a doubt the most sexy thing I've ever had to sell. And are you going to be putting this in Kartra? Yes. Yeah. As soon as we have the Kartra integration, I'll be creating Kartra campaigns that I'll be able to share with everybody. So anybody. And do we have to buy Kartra to get those campaigns? If yes, if you want to use Kartra, yes, you would need a Kartra account. So I have, I have an affiliate link I can give out to everybody that gets you the best deal that you get through Kartra. And then once you get that and you have a Kartra account, I can share those campaigns right into the right into your Kartra account for you. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah. All Sounds right. Sounds great. Go, let's go to Andrew. Hey, good morning, everyone. Um, okay, quick question um, on Troy's other half. Um, so we've, we're we loving this. Um, question, though, is there a way to change the lead price in a campaign once it's live, or do you have to set up a new campaign with a new price? Um, yeah, actually, I have it already open, John. I saw it in the chat. So give me a sec. I'm going to share my screen. And you guys are an agency, right? Yeah. But we we just manually rebuilt at this stage um, the lead cost. We, we you know, have a monthly subscription then. And that's why I, I kind of messed up initially. It was like I was. So when you go here. Amount. So when you go here in the campaigns, mm -hmm. um, you go to the money sign. This is a search lead campaign. Yep. If you go here, you can change the cost per lead right here. Yeah, I tried that. It was kind of blanked out and wouldn't let me edit it. But oh no! Okay, well, oh, send no. send a support ticket in. That should not have happened. Actually, um, it looks like it's back to zero, which is what I'd set up at the client well, level. If so if it looks like it may have actually. If you're putting, if you're putting zero in there then you're basically defaulting a credit a client's credit card and billing your own system. Then you're basically billing your own credit card. Then is that what you're doing? Yeah. And then we're just invoicing them like on a monthly basis where how many leads at the amount we've told them it's going to be. So just, as okay. Then, then you want to change. Um, you want to make sure that that price per campaign is at zero. It's obviously at, yeah. at two, two and a half right now. Um, or not two and a half. That's for the, this is a demo client. But then in your in your general settings, um, you can actually change that default price here. Say you want all of those to be zero because you're going to build outside of the system. So your cost per lead would be zero from any campaign you start from here forward. But if you have campaigns running, yes, you got to go back in into individual campaigns and actually change them where I just showed you. Uh, okay yeah i tried it the other day and um because we've got one that's a business troy owns so he doesn't want to mark up his own costs um and i was trying to reduce it to zero and it wasn't 
for some reason the field was not working, but now anything like that, works. just send a ticket in. I'll yeah. sell for Connie um, yeah. or one of our teammates. We'll, we'll get those awesome. to the tech team as quickly as possible to get it taken care of. Would yeah, that, no, I think it's good now. So thank you. Could that possibly be because the campaign was paused, Brady, or maybe the credit card wasn't in there or something like that? It, it could be. I didn't. I didn't pay attention. I just looked at it really nah, quickly. It was yeah. a test account, so I didn't actually go to their account. So okay, gotcha. Yeah, you know, could be different. Actually, that is paused right now. That Why not pause because we were updating something? Maybe I, I think I had to pause it to do it. Yeah. But and if we uh, if we need to, Troy, if we schedule a time, we can always take care of it whenever we do that next week also. So, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I look forward to talking to you guys. Awesome. We're loving it. All right. Awesome. Let's go to Nick. Go ahead, Nick. I got a real simple question for you. So um, I'll be using uh, acquisition air for my own purposes rather than selling them. However, okay. in, lis in listening to, uh, you know, Brady talk earlier, it makes perfect sense. I know all about the, the pains of dealing with the micro small businesses. Um, they're typically small for a reason. However, my question is, is um, if I've got a concentration of lots of them. And the example I, you, you set up, you know, so a local flower shop or whatever. What if I've got 500 plus local flower shops that are, they're looking for the same keywords, same searches or whatever. Couldn't I make a good lead generation sales business out of that or not? Well, here's, here's something about lead gen companies. And this is, this is not the way we operate. It's not the way our software operates, but it's the way the lead gen company and model typically works. They will generate leads at their own cost. And now they've got, let's say they've got a floral lead. They will take that same floral lead and they'll sell that to 10 florists. And mm -hmm. now it's a matter of, you know, this, this lead is going to get called by 10 different people. That's not what we do, but that's not to say you couldn't do that as a business model. I see. This is very typical in real estate or insurance. I don't know. I don't know about you, but I filled out an insurance form one time to get a quote on trying to lower my car insurance. Yeah. For the next six months, my phone freaking rang off the hook <laughs> with probably 50 different companies and agents. And I'm like, oh my God, you, these guys, I should, here's, here's a, here's what I would do if I was you guys, I would go and I would do that. And then every one of these guys that's calling you sell him good leads. Mm. Go, dude, you bought shit leads. Here's a good lead source. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, funny you mentioned that because insurance <laughs> is, is one of those concentrations where, yeah. Uh, just because we started in Erie and and Erie Insurance introduced us to all of their independent agents as their as their better, faster, cheaper hiring so solution. So yeah. now all of a sudden I've got I don't know a thousand in independent agents across the country. Uh, I'm I'm doing you know staffing services for them, but I'm thinking they all need these kind of leads, so I can be yeah. turn around and sell those. Yeah. Well, that that. Now that I'm thinking about that, that is a hell of an idea. Create a phone number, put the phone mm -hmm. number to an outsourcer and you know that's a salesperson and let them take all those sales calls and then hire another outsourcer to go fill out all the forms and get quotes from all these different people. Mm -hmm. And that phone number would be just inundated with incoming calls that would be sales calls for you to sell them leads. <laughs> that would be a okay. hell of an idea. If, okay. if I was if I was going to do what you're talking about, Nick, um, depending on your spread and what states, you could do a national search. And I'm assuming that your local florists, people that are searching, they're going to be in a somewhat area, that same area. Um, or if you have three or four or five, six states, do those states. If you're going to go down still to a zip code level, like, for instance, take a, a zip code of 50 zip codes in wherever those 500 florists are. That's why I'm saying you might just want to do a national search. And like John said, become the lead generator for florists and go sell it to all the florists. Um, that's that's an idea. So well, the nice uh, thing about the nice thing about uh, unlike a florist or my other niches, like I've got a lot of machine shops and, and, and you know, construction companies, that type of stuff. But 
the nice thing about insurance is that the product is is not localized as much. You know, you, any if they're if they're licensed in the state of Virginia, they can sell anywhere in that state of Virginia, and it's not like you got to go pick up the floor for the the flowers kind of a thing. So, I think I can really use this with that niche because I've got a concentration there. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. Well, keep us posted on uh, on your success when it happens, um, John. We got two in the chat. Diane says. But you can export the Karcher campaigns and show them as like PDFs or something, right? So we can build in CRMs funnels that we use. All right. What was that again? I didn't, I missed that one. She said, but you can export the Karcher campaigns and show them as like PDFs or something, right? That's the first question. And then the other one says, so we can build in CRM slash funnels that we use, question mark. Okay, yeah. So in Kartra, when you create a campaign, you can do a screenshot of the campaign graphically. So you know all the pieces involved and how they connect together. So yes, we can do that. Um, but what I'll do is I'll actually create the whole campaign as a bundle, package it up, and then I can I can just transplant that right into your Kartra account. Then you can clone it for each of your customers. So it, it'll be really slick. It's kind of like a snapshot in Go High Level. A snapshot includes all the pieces to the marketing campaign, and you can clone it, and you can transplant that into other people's accounts. So that's the way the, that the Kartra will work. And another thing, too, before we go on, before we, I know some people are, are dropping off here because we've been on here for an hour and a half almost. But one thing I wanted to share with you guys is Brady had talked a little bit a little while ago about the Becky, the bot, and having a chat bot on your website to answer people's questions is an amazing new tool. If you guys are not behind AI, if you're not leveraging AI to do some of your heavy lifting for you, you're going to get your butts kicked real soon in the future by people that are. Because having a live chat assistant on your website to answer questions 24-7 while you're sleeping is a really good thing. The problem with it is training it to act like a real human. And there is, for any of you guys that are interested, I'm going to share a link to Perry Belcher's training. He's going to do a live training on Sunday. I know <clears throat> it's St. Patty's Day and I know it's a Sunday and all that. But, uh, or whatever it is, I think it's St. Patty's Day. But anyway, he's doing this thing on Sunday. If any of you guys are interested, it's a free training. You can sign up. Guaranteed, if you sign up, you're going to get hit with all his marketing materials. But <laughs> it's, a, it's a really cool training. I've seen what he's going to teach. And it's amazing on how to train an AI bot. If you train it with these base prompts that he's going to share... Your robot will speak exactly like a human, and it'll be really hard to tell that it's not. And that is the that's the trick. That's the big key to to AI is prompting. And if you're going to prompt, there's a thing called a base prompt when you set up a robot. And when you set the base prompt, you're giving that robot all the information about themselves of how to act. And he literally goes into their childhood. He tells them who they are from their childhood to what things they learned from their grandparents and all this stuff. It is absolutely amazing. And when he base prompts that robot in the way that he's doing it, when that robot starts up and it answers questions, it's going to have the personality that he just gave it. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to react like a real human being. It's not going to be robotic. And I'm going to put the link in the chat. If any of you guys are interested in that, <clears throat> like I said, it's a free training going on this Sunday. And it will be very, very worth your time. Whether you're planning on doing AI bots or not, you should have access to this in your, uh, in your toolbox. <clears throat> At least know this is going on. So hey, Sean, I'm going to kick this one to you. Pat had a question. Um, said, isn't SEO instantaneous as well? It's the first question. And then she's um, 
he or she, I'm not sure, Pat, I'm sorry if, if it's a, a girl or a guy. Uh, just so I understand, are search leads the same buying interest level typically as SEO or consistently higher interest level because it's secondary search? How does it compare to retargeting campaigns? Have yeah, a couple abs absolutely. So SEO is anything but instant. SEO in many cases takes a long time to come in play. But when SEO is in play and it's working, then it's instant, but it's only instant in the fact that when you show up at the top in SEO and they click on your site, if they click on your site, remember there's nine others there you're competing with. If they click on your site, now they're on your website. They are still not a lead. What we're doing is we're giving you the lead for who's running the search. There is a huge difference there. You might have to get 50 people that come through your website through an SEO search before you actually get a lead. That, in my opinion, is not instant. That's anything but instant. Now, as far as the, the relevance of the lead, when they do come through SEO, and I, I've said this since day one in my SEO career, SEO leads are the best leads on the planet. SEO will bring you somebody, it's it's like a matchmaking game. You're matching up a buyer and a seller. You've got a buyer expressing an interest in wanting to purchase something and you're matching them up with somebody that's got that for sale. It is the best match you're ever going to get. We have just expanded upon that, like putting it on steroids because we're separating out all the crap we're separating out all the, the time it takes to do SEO. And we're literally just handing you who is looking for this right now. So it is, it is in my opinion, it's the best lead you're ever going to find. In advertising, it's it, it outweighs any other form of advertising I've ever seen. Because it literally is like matchmaking. It's it's right right place, right time. You're matching a, a buyer and a seller. It doesn't get any better than that. So as far as retargeting, what retargeting is, is retargeting is following them around with ads after they've hit your website. That's great because it keeps you top of mind. They see you everywhere, which from a branding perspective is really good. But a lot of you and a lot of the companies you're working with, they don't give a rat's ass about branding. They want a customer. Right. So with our site leads versus our search leads, with our site leads, somebody actually hits your site from SEO or any other form, any other way they get to your website. We're telling you who they are so you can communicate with them versus retargeting and just showing your ad every time they go to another website. So there is some some definite differences in here. I'm not dissing retargeting at all because retargeting is effective for what it is. And it's something that if you're already doing it, I'm not saying replace that with this. I'm saying add this in addition to. So hopefully that answers all those, all those questions. I think so. All right. Well, anything else before we wrap up? Richard's yawning, so we better get off. Uh oh. All right. <laughs> no, that's that's something completely different. I do have a question, John. The I'm kind of looking. I'm in a situation here, and I don't know how the platform works because, from what I understand, if I set up, you know, we're going to be charged the dollar ninety nine, whatever price I put in there, everybody's going to be charged that. And if there's any differentiation or whatever. I'm going to have to do that in a, on accounting and cutting checks on my own on the back side, correct? No, if. no, that's not correct. Like when you put a customer in the in the system, you're charging them a certain amount. So they have their credit card in place to pay that amount. When they pay that amount with their credit card, the $1.99 is split and it comes to us. The other, the remainder is split and it goes right into your account. There's no accounting required. That's all automated. Yeah, I got that part. But I'm saying if I've got salespeople or whatever I'm paying commissions on or whatever, then I've got to do that on the back end. 
I'm, I guess the real question, I guess. <laughs> That's an enterprise level <laughs> that you would have. Got, that. Yeah, I've got that. I'm well, we're, I've got the, 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 the full passenger line is enterprise level four at this point. Cause I know we got three levels is enterprise. Enterprise is the fourth level. Yes. Is that, is that going to put us in a position <clears throat> where if we want to sell our company, we can sell the platform. On the enterprise level. Yeah. What you would be selling is you would be selling the contract for the platform, not the platform itself. Book of business pretty much. Yeah. Okay. So, but that, that, because if I'm looking at, you know, I need to know whether that's even a, a road I need to entertain or not, because that's two different, completely, that's completely two different things. About let's let's right. just get you to 50,000 leads a month first, and then we'll have that conversation. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm going after, I'm going after the solar lead. So yeah, I agree. But okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah. That'll be a conversation for the, down the road. <clears throat> cool. I know well, that. I have I, full belief. I, 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 the, the, the question, I, I have somebody that I'm considering working with, and, and I don't know quite how I can work with him. And if he's selling leads, I can let him sell leads. But I, the, the relationships and how that works and how do I set up different accounts, I may need to get it clear in my head so I can ask a better question next time. Never mind. Thank you. <laughs> all right well let's uh let's go ahead and wrap up for today hopefully this was helpful for everybody uh, i would really encourage you guys to go back and re-watch the first section of this when i was going over that strategy of the campaigns and the keywords that's really important that is going to help you be successful right out of the gate so i'd really encourage you to watch that take some notes and, and when you're setting up your initial campaigns, uh, follow that recipe. I think you'll do very well with that. Hey, John, if you have just five minutes after this, if not, I can catch you later today. I want to run something by you. Okay. Yeah, just shoot me a link to your Zoom. And I'll pop in there. Cool. All righty, guys. All have right, guys. Yep. Have a great one. And thank you all for being here and uh, participating in our our little road show here. <laughs> Take care. All ashore that's going ashore. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye-bye.